Joining me now with more on this is CTV's royal commentator, Richard Berthelsen. Good morning, Richard. Good Great morning. to see you. Um, there was some controversy heading into this wedding. People thought it was too much for the princess, too expensive, too excessive. Your thoughts on why there would be any criticism at all? Well, exactly. I mean, it's a happy day for the princess and a happy day generally. But I mean, I think there's two big issues. I mean, the princess is ninth in line to the throne. This wedding, of course, follows a huge wedding and with massive public interest at the very same venue. The wedding was almost exactly the same, except for the touches that the bride and groom put in. And of course, because Eugenie and her husband chose to have this carriage procession through the streets of Windsor following the wedding, there were worse extra security costs. So, you know, the royal family covers the costs of the wedding itself inside the church, the reception, the events in the evening, the events tomorrow night, as they did with the wedding of the Duke and Duchess of Sussex in May. But it's those security costs that are covered by the public. And I guess there's really no way around that. And in the world we live in right now, security is a very significant consideration. What you have to balance that off against is the numbers of people in the streets of Windsor, the spending, the extra kind of oomph that goes into the economy, especially in a small little place like Windsor, does that balance off the security considerations? Mm -hmm. It's an open question. But I think it's a bit mean-spirited to begrudge her a wedding, you know, like uh, another grandchild of the Queen who had one in May, and she chose Windsor, and that's the way they do it. And, and would it have been any more expensive than Harry and Meghan's? No, I think it's probably, probably a little less expensive, except maybe there is an extra entertainment portion. We understand there's going to be a function this evening as well as tomorrow night at the Royal Lodge just down the road where they, where they actually live, the York family lives. So there's going to be a little ex extra expense, but that is the met by the private resources of the royal family. I think the security of themselves, security will be less expensive. The route chosen was less long. And, and would it have been the couple's choice to marry at Windsor Castle? Absolutely. Now, remember, there's been 17 royal weddings at Windsor. It is one of the venues of choice for members of the royal family, particularly a blood princess like Princess Eugenie. So it's, it's a normal thing to take place. It's coincident these two weddings have taken Taken place in the same year. But, you know, this wedding really reflected their own wishes and I think also the wishes of the Queen. The Queen is extremely fond of Windsor and she, I think, really likes to see her grandchildren married there. Okay. I'm, I'm trying to pay attention to what you're saying, but this is total eye candy looking at these pictures, these beautiful photos today from Windsor. A little windy. Everybody was holding on to their fascinators. Um, I do have to ask you about perhaps not your favorite subject, and that is the fashion. Yes. <laughs> um, because these, these princesses, they're known for bold fashion choices. That's right. Uh, bold and a bit of traditional at the same time. Yeah. I mean, there is a lot of yeah. tradition in that wedding dress. And of course, she wore uh, a wow. very, very famous tiara, which hasn't been seen in public, which was gifted to the Queen Mother, now is in the Queen's collection with a, an emerald of, you know, many carrots, double-digit carrots, uh, you know, so it was a very, very eye-popping choice. And her dress itself, I think, was extremely beautiful, particularly as many people have noted the cut. What is particularly interesting about it is she chose to expose her back. And she had very serious surgery as a 9 or 10-year-old for scoliosis. There are scars on her back. The, the, the hospital where she had that a surgery at is one of the charities that she's focused on. There were guests from that hospital at the wedding today. And she's chosen to expose it to really say to people, you know, we're not going to cover this up. It happened. It's part of my body. And I'm going to celebrate it. I think that was a very bold choice for my, that she's made and really fitting uh, given her charitable interests. As we pointed out, there were a lot of celebrities in attendance. Is that because of the groom, Jack Brooksbank? Who is he? Well, he is actually uh, an individual who works in the alcohol industry. He's now a representative for a brand of alcohol. He's managed nightclubs. So he works in that area. I think the, the celebrities in the audience are more likely dealing with charities that either Sarah, the Duchess of York, has worked with, or else uh, Prince Andrew, the Duke of York, her father, has worked with. And even Eugenie and Beatrice would know them through the different charitable things that they've gone, they've gone to over the years, and they've crossed paths. So they've got invited for that reason. Do you think that this is a bit of a relief for Harry and Meghan today, for the Duke and Duchess, that, that they're not the focal point 
today among all these other celebrities and members of the royal family? Well, I think any time Prince William and Prince Harry are not the focal point, they are quite happy. <laughs> and I think it was really interesting. Both William and Harry and their spouses uh, arrived rather discreetly. The rest of the royal family walked down the road uh, from down the hill from Windsor Castle to St. George's. Not a very long walk, but it gave the media a lot of opportunity to take photos of them. In the case of the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge and Sussex, they came in a car. So they really, really limited their public appearance prior to the wedding. And I think that was an attempt by them to lessen their appearance and not, not take away anything away from their from their cousin, who they're quite close to as well. So I think that was a really, uh, really nice gesture on their part. Okay. Uh Kate looked fantastic. Love she that did. fairy color. And, so and the queen. The queen and the duke also look great too. So for everyone, you know, watching their health closely as in their 90s, they look very good. They're inspirational, they really. Are. All right, Richard Berthelsen, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Pleasure.